Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. We've gotten back from LA. We experienced the SpaceX pod competition from just outside the gate. And we are just so happy and thrilled that all of these teams did really well, actually, um, for this difficult pod competition of achieving maximum speed. Um, quickly, we're just going to go dive in to some of the latest social media posts. Delft Hyperloop um, did a really good job really um, really had a professional um, experience with VR and um, congratulations Delft. Um, they took a lot of really good photos. I'd highly recommend you check them all out. Um, Midwest Hyperloop also um, did a very good job and um, despite of all the disadvantages and challenges along the way, we've passed 30 safety tests and built a complete and functional pod. Though we did not make it into the top three, we learned so much and ready for next year competition. Yep, it's kind of fun. Um, I'd like to thank everybody. And then CU Hyperloop from Colorado was there to um, you know, get ready for possibly the next year's competition. MIT Hyperloop uh, released this video, uh, basically their pod accelerating away. Our team per placed first out of all the US teams and fifth overall for the SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition. They're their only air levitated pod during the competition. Unfortunately, we didn't get to run Sunday um, due to time, but we won the innovation award for our collaborative work in passing all the tests, including open air Hyperloop. Congrats. And then uh, Team Hyper Ed um, did very well. Unfortunately, we didn't get to run this year due to some issues with the brakes. Um, however, we're confident we can return next year, build upon the lessons and get in the tube. Good job. Um, University of Windsor was keeping up uh, the chase um, and um, offered really cool photos um, and I just want to briefly go down a little bit further and we'll talk about Tomb Hyperloop in a little bit um, as uh, they had some interesting <laughs> um, experiences but Swiss Loop um, did a very good job. One of the main strengths of the pod is that it can accelerate very fast particularly in the beginning and achieve a personal best during the open tube test. Um, meaning that their pod, Claude Nicalia, uh, reached a maximum acceleration of 2.7 Gs. So from zero to 100 kilometers in 1.3 seconds. So let's Three, just two, one, run! <laughs> wow, that's pretty awesome. Um, Hyperloop UPV also did a very good job um, and uh, they've released so many different um, stories about uh, their uh, pod competition um, and they're really excited about next year's challenge, a 10 kilometer uh, track that might have a bend or two um, that SpaceX hinted at. Um, Swiss Loop again, um, they can't believe the pod competition is over. Um, there's Elon Musk looking at their pod. Um, but they did a really good job, um, really interesting uh, group, and um, I have a feeling that they're going to be uh, there next year. Um, we'll go to the Hyperloop One news about um, test track in Saudi Arabia in another video. Um, but Hyperloop TV, TT is also putting out media. Um, Avishkar Hyperloop did a very good job, um, and um, you know, it couldn't get any better with this kind of a photo as a team. That's pretty sweet. Um, Swiss Loop again um, reached second place in the pod competition. Um, Tomb Hyperloop reaching first. Um, EPFL did a very good job with their Bella Lou um, reaching 238 kilometers an hour. And they're really happy about that result. So good job. Um, and again, Tomb Hyperloop <laughs> won it. Um, and um, that's kind of a good segue um, to the next uh, discussion. Um, Elon Musk tweets out hyperloop speed of 463 kilometers an hour. Um, however, it was an interesting uh, journey there. So let's take a this quick look as the tomb hyperloop pod goes down the tube. And then right there, it stops. So let's just take a look. And you can see like a panel fly off and 
some dust and sparks. So that's a good footage, Tom Cross um, going so close, and then a little bit of rapid on time disassembly. And what does that mean? Well, uh, Pod is alive and in good shape. <laughs> During the final run, uh, we experienced an incident that made us lose some parts. After further inspection, our pod and our data retrieved from the final run, we can now share the first analysis of our pod um, exploding. Well, the pod didn't explode. One of the propulsion units derailed, most likely because of a large misalignment of the rail, which it was indeed kind of um, going back and forth down the hyperloop tube. It's, it's quite significant, actually. With the pod consequences running too low, some of the other modules were deformed due to anonymous load and made some of the motors hit the shell. The biggest impact occurred when one of the screws that holds the rail to the ground hit one of our brakes, ripping apart its bottom. Um, with that, the pressurized brake lost all pressure instantly and made it look like an explosion. We designed our pod to be fail safe because of that other brakes engaged and stopped the pod. After the run, the telemetry um, board delivered the healthy status of the pod to the ground station, which allowed us to safely retrieve the pod in good condition. Um, as you can see in the photos, the pod is alive and survived the incident well. Um, this is an unexpected but invaluable lesson learned. Um, it made us understand how high speed and every little detail counts, and we'll use these insights for future improvement. Like, no joke, it doesn't even look like anything really happened here. <laughs> uh, just a little bit of dust. And so, really, thank you, uh, Tomb Hyperloop, for um, being a friend of the show and, you know, chatting with me while I was at the SpaceX pod competition. And um, an incredible engineering feat. Um, and just, I'm, I'm just really in awe of the team and uh, the design of their pods. So, where was I? I was just outside the gate. Um, looking um, inward, but I was um, one of the few, actually, that was closest to um, the test track and a little bit further down where registration is. So um, I was, you know, one of the few um, to hear the pod going max speed, and I was able to get this audio recording. And it's a little bit of a. Yeah, we have to now. There we go. In five, four, three, two, one, lock! And then they don't know if the pod <laughs> had exploded at that point. So we're just going to listen to it one more time. In five, four, three, two, one, lock! Yeah, so it, it sounds kind of like a, a jet, a very quiet jet. Um, you know, you don't hear any vibration or, or bass, but you can definitely feel um, you can definitely feel that something fast is moving through that pod and it's just a really uh, awesome experience to think that that's the fastest Hyperloop pod ever and um, you know it's it's just a huge accomplishment and to be that close and hear it um, was actually a really big um, bonus perk that I'm really thankful for and um, it's just a really fascinating um, moment in history to witness so um, anyway Thank you so much for joining in the Hyperloop. We're going to have more videos and more in-depth um, news on other Hyperloop developments. Um, but it was just a really fun weekend uh, meeting all of the SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition teams. Thank you so much for coming up to me and saying hello. And um, we look forward to being at next year's Hyperloop pod competition uh, with a press pass this time. And um, congratulations to all the teams. Um, we'll be um, closely following you. and. Um, you know, supporting you in the future. So if you ever want to do a brief interview of what you learned, how you're going to apply what you're learning in the future to or, or what you uh, thought about this experience, we'd be happy to interview you. And a warm congratulations to all the teams again. Thanks. And stay in the Hyperloop.